Hey everybody, this is Patty Negri. Welcome to the witching hour. Yes, the hour of the day when the veil is thin and magic happens. We have some green magic for you today. We have a psychic, medium, modern witch, and author, Devin Hunter. Welcome, Devin. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to be here. I am so thrilled to have you on. I'm so thr thrilled to meet you. We'll all get to know you together. I have one of your books. I have Crystal Magic for the Modern Witch, which is fabulous. But tell us about the new book you have just out. Yeah. In the process of soft release right now is Houseplant Horticulture. And so you might find it in a couple of your local stores, but the big release date is April 8. And this is this incredibly gorgeous piece of material that just poured out of me. And in addition to being like hardback and beautiful, and it has a, a black ribbon that runs through it. I just as a fresh copy where everything's still crispy, uh, but it has this beautiful thing. The big thing, though, in addition to it being all about connecting uh, us as witches to houseplants, which is something that we're not traditionally encouraged to do in the way that we're encouraged to work with trees and herbs and things like that. There is some really incredible and beautiful artwork by the amazing CLO Thompson, who did the illustrations. So there's these gorgeous watercolor illustrations that help explain the magic that we spent a lot of time mapping out and working through to make sure that there was something that was really as complete as possible for modern witches who love plants and want to celebrate that relationship. That is beautiful. I can't wait to read it. I can't wait to get it, actually, because I do a lot of clearings and all those things that we do. And I do work with plants. I do encourage people to put magic into their pants, know the magic of the plants. So I'm going to get a lot from your book. I usually tell them, like, make it your this plant or your that plant or your money plant or your love plant. Give it a name. Everybody wants a purpose, right? Yes, yes. They thrive. They seem to thrive when mm -hmm. they have a purpose. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you're going to love my so, book. <laughs> so how did this come about have you always been a plant person is it in you did your witchcraft take a left turn or right turn or kind of all of the above so i'm lucky enough i grew up in rural ohio right and the northern tip of appalachia and it was we grew up we had to hunt and we had to grow our own food and that was a big part of just the lifestyle and so i grew up farming essentially but like in a very small micro kind of way we only had an acre and a half of land but it was full of, of vegetables and, and good stuff like that a lot of farms that I worked on and when I got out of high school I was exposed to what are considered houseplants for the first time when I was working on a produce farm who had a little tropical section and they did flowers in the spring and so I was working in the greenhouses and there were these plants that were pushed off to the side and they were kept in their own little room no one ever went in and said hello, but they were these, it was a jungle room. It was this beautiful. So I would sneak off into the jungle room and I got a plant that is now considered to be like, it was very rare a year ago and now there's more people who have it. But at the time I didn't realize I had this beautiful plant and I took it home and I killed it because I didn't know what I was doing because I had never had a house plant before. And so that kind of kickstarted like the love of kind of an indoor tropical space, so to speak. Like I enjoyed the aesthetic. And I enjoyed the feeling, but I, I could not keep anything alive. And so I, because I didn't know what I was doing. And then fast forward several years, I end up partnered with a Taurus who very much knew what they were doing with houseplants and had a very small collection, but it was, it was mighty and it was noble. And so he was very good at taking care of his plants. And so I was like, okay, maybe I'll start doing the thing. And so one by one, I started bringing in plants and I realized that I got addicted. I, I, Within it was probably 2018 where when like I got the bug, but then when the when we all when the world shut down and we were all stuck at home, I found a renewed spiritual connection to the plants that I was collecting. In that I wasn't able to go out into the forest anymore. I wasn't able to go and leave my home, but I could find ways of meeting Mother Nature halfway and bringing that green verdant energy into my life still. I just had to figure it out. And that became my, my really my relationship with houseplants was how can I bring that green flame that is out there right now in the verdant world as spring's waking up if you're in the northern hemisphere? How can I bring that into my home as a spiritual uh, presence? And that is essentially what became houseplant horticulture. So years later, here we are. And I, I put this, it what felt like, is anybody going to read this book? Uh, I think it it's turning out, yeah, people like this idea. So 
I'm really excited to have been able to work and create it the, with the team that I did because it could not have turned out better. It's a beautiful book and it's, the material is beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. And I do notice more and more people are having house plants, whether it's a new trend that you've you started it, I'm sure. Uh, you no, know, when I go in houses, people were there were so many years that it seemed very stark, mm -hmm. very indoors was indoors and outdoors is outdoors. I have a section. I my kitchen table, which is really rich where the cat eats, is like the hospital for those that aren't mm -hmm. doing as well as good, but we give them love. Yeah. So far, so good. Yeah. So I knew, again, I have your table of contents and your first chapter is the green flame. What is the green flame? Yeah. So the green flame is a term that I coined many moons ago when I was working on what eventually became the, the tradition that I founded, which is sacred fires. And each of the flames are, I think the best way to explain it without getting into too much stuff and confusing people is if we think of the divine rays that are often talked about in, in, in many different traditions, very similar to that concept. There are these core spiritual energies that run through the universe. And the green flame specifically is the verdant energy. So it's the verdant energy of life and not just plant life, but that kind of extends to mycelial life like mushrooms, fungus, all of that stuff. It's the bedrock for more complex life like us. And, and it's the most prevalent life. And, if we, and what we even, I'm a big science nerd and I'm really into space and sci-fi and all that stuff. And one of the things that I, I find really interesting is this idea that on other planets and stuff, yeah, there's probably plant life, but complex life like us, super, super duper rare. But that also means that this energy is everywhere, all throughout the universe. And that's something that to me, spiritually, I can tangibly look at and I can touch and I can play with all these house plants in my garden. And I can see it as a real thing. And that is exciting. So we work with the psychic energies that are found by tapping into living plants and living, living creatures that are simple in that way. And that's the green flame. And so to bring that energy into our home is something that it's not, it's for some reason, as you were saying, like there, there was an era where when I was a little boy, everyone had house plants, but then the nineties happened and it's just like everybody got rid of their house plants and. The, and we're just now getting back into this. So my grandmother would be very pleased that houseplants are coming back the way they have. Yeah, that is beautiful. Yeah. And again, almost every day I hear like news about plants can think, plants can communicate, trees can think. And this is from the science world, not from the world or the witchy world. So they're catching up with us oh, yeah. slowly. Yes, yes. They are catching up with us. Okay. So if somebody's sitting there going, I haven't had a plant and I kill plants. I'm afraid to have a plant. What will bringing a plant or this green flame into their house do? And how can they not kill it? <laughs> right. So uh, we spent a lot of time in the book going through plant care. And the reason why I did that was because I and my editor and I had we tussled on it a little bit because they, the idea was let's put more spells and more stuff in there. And I was like, hold on, hear me out. If you're inviting a plant into your magical life and then it gets sick, let's say it gets spider mites or you get some weird fungus you didn't know about or root rot or something, you're going to incorporate that into the interpretation of how that magical experience played out, right? I can't just create a book about this type of magic and not give this really important aspect to it, right? If you are somebody who has a black thumb or a brown thumb and you kill plants, I wrote a chapter that's all for you. And it really is going through the things that we don't know to think about that often lead to us killing plants. Like, for example, by the time you go to your supermarket or your hardware store and you buy your house plant, you bring it home, that plant is ready to be repotted, most likely. And a lot of the times what happens is that the plant just its roots are too bound. You don't water it the right way just because its roots are so bound. And then you kill it on accident and you have no idea what you did. But you're, no one told you, hey, when you get this home, give it a, a week to acclimate and then repot it. No one told you that. So you killed it. No. And you thought that was your fault. No, that's not how that works. So what I did is I tried to go through those things and talk about them and then break down the essentials like temperature and humidity and watering and all of that good stuff and talk about ways to create an environment for your plant that fits your home and your lifestyle. Instead of you trying to do the opposite, which is to try to fit your lifestyle around a plant, I tried it for a long time. It never works because inevitably I fail to do that thing for three months and then it dies, right? 
So learning really how to work with the, with your plants and make that relationship something that is long-term feasible, I think is the most important thing. So I spent a lot of time working with that. And I, for me, the reason why this is an important thing is that as a witch living in the modern world, I am surrounded with stimuli. Stimuli from technology, stimuli from, but mostly it's technology, let's not lie. Well, my, my life is filled with it. And what I found is it's not good for me mentally. It's not good for me spiritually. And there's all, so many times when we're talking about being witches in the long term, where we run into these instances where we don't know what to do with our magic. We, we learned that thing that we wanted to learn, or we've done that thing that we wanted to do, and now we're on the other side of it. Now what? And what I have found is that bringing plants in and having that kind of almost daily or at least weekly relationship with them encourages that long-term magical growth because you're incorporating your magic into that relationship. And that alone is worth the extra exercise. But I find the peace incredible. I find the, the spirit, like being able to be around my plants and to honestly think about whatever it is that's coming up in my life and ask the question, what can I do magically or spiritually to make this situation better? has become probably the most powerful thing that I do in my practice because I can sit down and cast spells and I can sit down and do all the things, but taking the time to, to really have Congress and to really commune and to properly think about those things is so rare, but having plants and having this relationship with them encourages that in a way that I haven't found anywhere else. That is beautiful. Thank you. Okay. Your spirits, green, your second chapter is green spirits. So is your belief system each plant, mine, I'm an animist, so each plant has a spirit? Do you give it a spirit? Do you create your magic within the spirit? Both, all of the above. You... So, yeah, so I'm an animist as well. And I, in my relationship, so let's talk about killing plants for a second. And, and then going up to, after you killed one and going up to the next one and saying, hey, let's be friends. So what I found is that there is something, we talk about how in animism, how there's a shared spirit between all of the individual types of our individual members of that species. And so all will say, just because I'm looking at them, all inferium crystallinums have the same plant spirit is the idea. What I found is, uh, and I write about this in the book, is that I had um, started developing a relationship with a plant spirit and I killed the plant and I was heartbroken. And I thought, I failed. I have done, and I had a dream where the plant spirit came to me and was like, no, you just need to buy another one and try. Like, I, I, I'm over here. I'm just waiting for you to come back and pick me up. And it changed the way I thought of everything. And it, it became this idea where, well, no, I was drawn to this plant. I was drawn to work with it. But just like any form of initiation, just like any form of, of work that we're going to do, we're going to hit a bump. And we're not always going to be able to climb over that. So when I'm ready, again, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to that plant and say, initiate me into your mysteries. And that's the way I look at it. So when it comes to we accidentally kill a plant or we stumbled into a situation where we're not able to fulfill that plant's needs in our home, it doesn't necessarily mean that we're bad witches or that we're bad mediums or any of that stuff. There are so many circumstances that involve that. What I find working with the spirits to be the most empowering part of all this is that they encourage us to continue and to try again because they're trying, they're out there doing it. They're out there propagating themselves and they're trying their hardest to proliferate. So they, to me, what I found is that the plants don't necessarily look at us like we're the captors who are forcing them into these horrible situations. I think there's this weird narrative that we created with that, but really to th I think they look at us more like another way for them to spread their essence throughout the world, because that's the energy of the green flame. It just wants to spread. And so to me, I look at it like that. So when I fail at a plant, I, I'm mournful, especially if I loved it and I have like a, like a really close relationship to this one particular plant. Come on, now that happens all the time. But if something happens with it, I really do think of it in this spiritual context of, okay, was I ready for that mystery? No, because I couldn't do the thing yet. And that's okay. But I'm going to try again. And that's the way I look at it. So I, I think really plants are using me just as much as I'm <laughs> using them sometimes to get what I need spiritually. But the spirits there, it's more than just a plant spirit. We've got big spirit. We've got nature spirits. We just think of just Mother Nature herself, right? Or the great god Pan. We have these spirits that are intrinsically connected to the green flame and are emanations of the green flame. And to recognize and honor those energies, especially if you have a tradition where you work with the green man, 
right? Well, of course, incorporate that into this work. Hello, right? And that chapter is identifying some of those spirits that are out there like Mother Nature and really how to, what that means for us as witches and pan and uh, different plant spirits. But it's really more about connecting your existing relationship to the spirits that you have and identifying that in your, in your relationship with your plants. And so I really encourage everyone always to make the magic fairs. And I say this, hey, this is what I do, but I'm 100% on board with you making it a super druid experience if you're a druid or going 100% uh, Persian if you're into that. Go for it because the green flame don't care. The green flame just wants to do the green flame. It just wants to flame on. That is beautiful. So other than this, you're developing this relationship with the spirit, with the green flame, with the green spirit of the planet. How does that or does that incorporate into your rituals, spell work, daily practices and things? Oh, yeah. So you hinted at it at the first part when we were talking. There's this idea that you have a, a partner, right? And so you can have a, a plant that you I, I talk about creating basically living altars, which are like your plant pots. And so you can put all kinds of things in there, crystals and talismans and spell papers and all kinds of good stuff. And all that's in the book on how to do that if you're curious. And you can make it a, a very quite living experience. And that's what's exciting to me is that when we start to incorporate this into our magic, what we find is there's something very different about working with a living plant versus something that is desiccated, right? Like the dried herb or bark or something along those lines. And we know this because a lot of us work with trees and things like that to some extent. But when you bring it into your home, and you start to have this relationship, you start to feel the psychic energy that a living thing generates. And it's different from working with a crystal. Um, it's different from working with other humans or animal spirits or anything. It's very unique unto itself. And I think just psychically alone, to be able to sit and be in the presence of that and to tune in and out of it, just from an experimental standpoint, is a really cool thing to do as a witch. And I think it heightens your senses. And then to take it further and to go, what are the properties here? This plant feels fiery to me. Why? And so what I talk about in the book is this idea that you get to, once you establish kind of the basics with this plant, because it's living, it's going to tell you stories. It's going to show you magic. And it's all about showing up to do it. So yeah, that's plant care. That's like weekly going through, making sure things are, everything's taken care of. In my case, I have over 400 house plants. I don't recommend it. Um, but I have a lot of houseplants. It's a lot of work. And so for me, plant care is a big, it's a big thing. But for the average person who has maybe a dozen houseplants, incorporating that relationship of going up and watering them and checking their leaves. And honestly, we should all be giving our plants showers whenever possible, dust, dust them off and give them that, that kind of rain experience that they get outside. Not just because it's cute and fun, but because they actually need it. It's good for them. Really? Yeah. I've never given a shower. Yeah. And oh. plants also need wind. Like this is another thing. Wind stimulates a horm like hormones in the plant that will that tell it to grow and, and to strengthen its 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 leaves and its stems. And there's a whole thing that goes on. There's these things we just don't know to do. And when we can incorporate, for instance, one of the things I talk about in the book is, okay, so you, if you have to use grow lights or if you have to use water supplements, things like that incorporating sigil work into all of that to make sure that your plants are getting what they need and all of this becomes part of the the magical praxis so to speak of getting not just your plants to survive right because we want that but getting your magic to proliferate and when you've got these living things they don't only just teach you uh, magic that has nothing to do with plants like i've learned so much that has nothing to do with plants themselves because the plants are related to blah 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 and i can go to blah 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 through the plant right and so it, there's a lot to it. There's a lot of psychic potential, I think, when it comes to working with plants. But it's so subtle. And I, I don't know that everyone has the initial sensitivity to appreciate it. And, but I think it happens. I think if you're a witch and you've been around and you've been practicing and you, the more sensitive you become, the more aware you become that these things are, are happening around you. And that's why I wrote the book. I wrote the book for people like us who know yeah, there's something going on there with that plant. It's able to do this thing. And I want to go as a psychic, as a psychic person, I want to go figure out what that is. Right. And don't you think the plants know that? Oh, without question. Yeah. The, and yeah. I, I did a, so I, I import a lot or I'm on an import strike at the moment, but I was importing a lot of plants from other countries. And 
at one point I had gotten a batch of plants that were infected with a fungus that I was not prepared for. And it didn't, it passed through customs and everything. And I didn't know. And so I probably maybe a week later, I have a nightmare where my plants are being encroached upon by like a military. And there's this war that they're, it was almost like plants versus zombies, a thing in my head, in my dream. And I wake up and I'm like, what is this? And I go out to this one plant that was very vivid in my head. And she's my philodendron strawberry shake. She's gorgeous. And, and she had the infection and I was able to get to, to figure out that it was from this import that I had. And it took out a big chunk of my plant collection, but it was the plants came to me in a dream and said, Hey, <laughs> hey, come fix this. This is a problem. So that was the moment that everything really clicked in my head. And I was like, oh, no, they're, they know me. They know like we, we are. This is real. Like this is a real thing. I think that is beautiful. Now, so say if somebody's watching, if there's some new practitioners who watch or listen to my show and they're going, this intrigues me. I like plants. Maybe I had some plants growing up or maybe I didn't. So what would you be your first thing? Okay, I've bought a, I've got a plant. Here it is, a plant. I'm going to reply. I got your book. I'm going to do things. No. Do you suggest like meditating with your plant, getting to go still and inside your plant? And yeah. So what I tell people to do when it comes, so let's say you're starting out and we have one or two plants in your home. What I tell people to do is to actually start off by getting a plant that they have some sort of relationship to if possible. A lot of the times that's like an aloe plant because we, so many of us grow up with a little aloe plant in our kitchen or you know something along those lines. There's Hoyas that a lot of people grew up with. That's a common, it's called a wax plant. But there, there's usually, there's a plant that was around somewhere in your childhood or somewhere. I say to start with that one. And the reason being is that you already have an, an established connection to that plant's spirit and that to that plant psychically. So oftentimes when we have that start, it makes the rest of it a lot easier. Otherwise, there are, there's, I, and I have a list in my book of 10 plants that are really easy to get witchy with. They, the spirits, for some reason, just love to talk and love to come out and do their thing. And they're very communicative and they tend to respond in magic very well. And so I have a list of those plants. One of those that a, a lot of people, you can just start off with is something like a plant or a, is Zamalacus Zamifolia is the name, but we just call it a ZZ plant. But it's a really protective plant and its leaves grow like wings, like raven wings. Actually, I have one right here. But its little leaves will grow out like a raven's wing. And this one will go black and they've got all kinds of different colors and things. But with this plant, they're really hard to kill, which is great. So they're really hardy. But more the thing that I love about them is that they push through things. So they're really good if you have blocks or if you feel like you're meeting resistance, they're really good about pushing through resistance. And I love that. And so, so since so many of us do cleansing work and clearing work and things like that, I think a ZZ plant or even a snake plant is going to really be excellent for that type of thing. There's another plant, which is Tradescantia, which is Wondering Dude is its new fun nickname and has a, a kind of a horrible folk name that I'm not going to ever say but we just call it the wandering dude. And it's this beautiful plant that has medicinal properties and uh, you can ingest it. It's safe for your plant, your animals to be around with no problem, but it's a prolific grower and it needs very little attention and, and it, it has green and purple leaves and it's just this really cool plant. And it is incredibly magical. And not only does it do beautiful things with our dreams and help us to clarify our psychic visions, but it's another one that reaches out because of the way that it grows and because of its own patterns, it reaches out and finds new opportunities for us. And so it's this really easy plant to bring in and have on your altar as this living agent, this living thing that's actively, as you're taking care of it, that plant is going to go out and take care of you. And to have that as part of your, just your altar is just easy. It's a simple thing to do. It brings that energy in and they're easy to take care of. Oh, that's beautiful. So do you talk, do you tell your plant, this is what I'm looking for, new opportunities? Do you sit and literally talk verbally to oh, your yeah. plants? Oh, yeah. Medicine? Oh, yeah. So to, I guess to answer the other part of your question um, from before, yeah, so I sit down with them. I, <laughs> I used to think it was silly. Now I just don't care. Now I just sit down with it and do my thing. But I do, I, I sit down with it and I introduce myself and I let it know that it's safe. And this is something that I, I find with, Anything that's a wild spirit, I, I'm learning 
they need to know that you're not a, a, a poo head. Like they need to know that you actually at the least care. And so uh, what I find is to sit down with them and then just let them know, hey, I'm a witch and I am very interested in you. And I see you. I know you're in there. I feel you. And I want you to know that it's safe to talk to me. I want you to know that if you ever have a message for me, that it's okay to give that to me. And that while you don't have to, but I'm going to take care of you anyway. And one day I may ask you for a favor, but you don't have to do anything until you feel ready. Just being that person that we all know we need. I know it sounds so silly, but I, I really do find reaching out with empathy and respect for anything, whether it, any, any spirit will always get you, always get you rewards in one way or another, whether that spirit comes out and gives you a hundred dollar bill or it just gives you a pat on the back when you need it. You'll always have a friend. And that's what I find in the spirit world more than anything counts is being a friend. And so the plants aren't any different. So I sit down with them and I, we have that conversation. And then when they do something beautiful, like they put, because I collect a lot of rare plants and a lot of variegated plants and plants have a lot of weird colors and, and things like that. And so when they do something beautiful, then I totally go crazy for them. And I go, oh, look at you. Oh, lady. And I pick it up and I walk around the house. I show everybody and I make them feel special and pretty. Because we all need that. That's one of those things. But I do, I have a very personal connection with the plants without question. And there's plants that I, I took care of for years and they died or their life cycle was over or whatever. And I haven't necessarily felt the need to go cultivate that relationship again. But there's plants that just want to stick around. And even if I something happens to them, they still find a way to come back in. I, I, somebody will send me something. It's a cutting. And I'm like, OK, here we go again. So there's definitely an intelligence. There's definitely a, they reach out. And once that is that relationship's established. So yeah, sit with your plants and talk to them. Totally do it. Good. Good. And I, I'm thinking back to my childhood. Aloe is the one too. Again, because you cut yourself, you get sunburn, you get everything else. There's aloe. Because all the, my mother's other plants were plastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There was this relationship. She, she, she was so afraid she would kill them. Even flowers. I love flowers. I love fresh flowers, but they will die. They're supposed to be part of the process. So, um, yep. that was funny. Yeah. So, and, that, and a lot of people too, don't know that your plants go dormant. A lot, like your house plants will go dormant. And so, uh, oftentimes you think you've killed something, but you haven't, it's just gone dormant and you don't know until it comes out of dormancy. Alocasias, uh, elephant ears, which beautiful everyone they're everywhere all over stores and things like that those are notorious for that so it, it, people buy them they're big and bushy and then you bring them home and they just wither away and it's just they go dormant because they had a shift in environment and that's how they respond but don't throw them out just wait a couple of months and then they'll come right back yeah oh that is great what do you think about people i've seen videos um people doing and there's a, a branch over their head and they're going touch me and you see the plant literally come down and touch them and come back. Mm -hmm. Do you think plants can do that? Is that what I do? But is that something are, is that we're looking at so, a different kind of magic here? Or? Yes, no. So there actually are plants that do respond to things like touch and movement and shadow and light play. So what I have found to be trippy, so there's a plant called it's a mimosa plant and it's often called the, the sensitive plant. And if you just barely graze it, you could not even touch it. It will, the leaves will fold up and it's just, it's a trigger kind of response. It's very similar to what happens in like carnivorous plants when there's a, a hair trigger. So you've got stuff like that. Then you have plants that are like the prayer plant, which as soon as they have the right type of temperature change or light change, they will close up and it happens very quickly. And it's amazing. And they do that to preserve heat, actually. I thought that was fascinating. Yeah. So they do it to make sure that the if there's a frost or something, that the growth point doesn't die, which is really cool. So you've got these, you have plants that respond to things. So I wouldn't be, I wouldn't at all be surprised if something like that existed in the world on demand, if you had a relationship with things. I have never seen it in it. Uh, I've seen videos of people doing stuff and I'm like, yeah, I yeah. But at the same time, I, I know that you can time a lot of those cool biological responses that happen in plants. You can time them and then go in and take photos and do cool things. So you never know because there are plants that like their branches drop at night and then they raise back up in daytime. So 
There's things like that that totally are possible. And if the person was smart enough, they could make it look real cool. But yeah. mine don't reach out and touch me. I wish they did. I would be poison ivy all the time with tendrils and I would be that person in a heartbeat. Yeah. Ah, I love it. Do you play music for your plants? Oh, yes. A lot of disco. Um, I find disco is really easy to just start dancing to. And so they and I listen to like club music and all, you know, things like that. The, the, all of the hits, but definitely disco. I just wrote an, an a, 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 a article for the Llewellyn Journal and in it I put my playlist, one, well, one of the playlists that I love to dance to. And, and the plants like it. The, the, they really, truly do. And I don't know if it's just because they're entertained or my, my current philosophy or thought is that it's, it drums up a bunch of psychic energy that they're able to interact with. And so they're excited by that. But they do. And, I've, and there's plants that I thought were, they do. And I've, I put them in a space where I, I don't know if my, my butt is just that, that amazing that it brings plants back to life or if it's the psychic energy that's produced when I dance. But I definitely think that there's something to it. And, and then you, when I leave, if I have to go on tour or something like that, I play a lot of smooth jazz for them and classical they love they do love them some baroque music but i yeah i def definitely go on the instrumental side definitely try to do more of that than the vocals they don't seem to really care much for human language things like that but they really like an instrument so i've noticed those things yeah it is beautiful so now that we've got everybody intrigued because i am Tell people where they can get their book and where, what about you? Do you have any, you said to go on tour. Do you have places where people can see you or any events coming up or anything like that? Yeah, absolutely. So you can always just go to modernwitch.com and we keep that loaded with all of the new stuff. So you can always go there. We've got a kind of a joint conference weekend coming up. That's an online conference. Every year I do the official Witches Sabbath and Horticulture, which is uh, a, a gathering of green witches we all get together and aaron murphy hiscock and juliet diaz and amy blackthorne have all presented in the past and it's really kobe michael we've got a really always a great lineup a really great uh, community of teachers there and we always get together and and my events are put on specifically to help authors connect to their readers because it's so hard to do and not all of us have the chance to travel to conferences and so that's why we put on our events and we even everything gets broken down and split up between the teachers. There's not a lot of, of money that is made outside of paying out teachers. So it really is this event that's just for education and just for community. So come check us out, modernwish.com. It's all there. But we'll be doing lots of plant stuff there for that weekend. And then I've got Temple Fest coming up at the end of summer, which is going to be big. And I'll be doing my house plant horticulture stuff there. And I I'm sending up uh, some other shops and visits and things like that along the way. So just stay tuned and I'll, we'll release that as it's coming out. There's a local shop out here that we're setting stuff up with out uh, right now called Moon Kissed. So definitely check them out. And aside from that, it's all online. Like we're just, we're trying to put out as much online as we can and just try to get the word out because it's definitely people are waking back up and engaging things again. And, and we're part of that. And so we're just here for that. And we're just spending as much time creating community and opportunities for community as we can. Okay. So what, is, what you're on social media. Mm -hmm. So what are you on social media? What is your website? And everybody go. Yeah. Like, at follow. Mr. Devin Hunter on pretty much everything. And you can just get modernwitch.com easiest way to find me and Matt and Storm and everybody. Yeah. We're all on there. Yay. Yay. Thank you so much. I'm excited to get your book. My plants are excited for their very first shower ever. Do it. <laughs> Wind shower. I, I will. I'm pretty good with plants most of the time, but I do have a little hospital area. But thank you, Devin. You are delightful. You guys check out his book. Everybody needs some plants. Bring nature in. Bring in that green spirit. Bring in that green flame. Thank you for bringing your green magic to the witching hour. Thank you for having me.